And now, the starting lineup for your SCSA Toolbox Tuesday. From Regina, Saskatchewan, standing 5'9 and 7'8, safety advisor, Justin Brooks. Good afternoon and welcome to SCSA Toolbox Tuesday. My name is Justin Brooks, safety advisor for the SCSA, and I'll be presenting today's toolbox. Before I start the presentation, I wanted to take a moment to discuss a few items before we get going. This presentation is being recorded and will be available for later viewing on our Facebook and YouTube channel. So if you're not following our social media accounts, make sure that after this webinar, you give this video a like and a share and follow our pages to keep up to date on safety in Saskatchewan. So today, everyone out there in internet land, we are going to be talking about safety signage. So without further ado, I will start from the beginning and share my screen here with you. So safety signage. Construction site safety signs are displayed to deliver a clear health and safety message. Failing to understand the meaning of a health and safety sign on site might mean you lose your life or your job. In this week's Toolbox Talk, we will look at the law regarding safety signs as per CSA regulations. Health and safety signs are displayed everywhere on construction sites, from the site hoarding and entrance points to various locations throughout the site. If you work on construction sites or even just walk past one, you are likely to have spotted some of these health and safety signs. They come in bright colors like red, green, blue, yellow. But what are these signs for and what do they mean? Safety signs and colors are useful tools to help protect the health and safety of employees and workplace visitors. Safety signs are used to draw attention to health and safety hazards, point out hazards that may not be obvious, provide general information and directions, remind employees where personal protective equipment must be worn, show where emergency equipment is located, and indicate where certain actions are prohibited. Color attracts attention and can be used extensively for safety purposes. For example, color can be used as an additional safety measure to identify the contents of pipes and the nature of the hazard. The choice of color also draws attention to the probability of a hazard causing harm. For example, color red is used to indicate a definite hazard. The potential hazard is communicated by the color yellow. When employees are aware of the hazards around them, they take all necessary precautions. The possibility of an injury, illness, or other loss is minimized. However, while safety signs and colors are valuable in warning of hazards, they are not substitutes of eliminating or reducing those hazards whenever possible. All safety signs have to conform to the CSA standards. More can be found under the CSA Signs and Symbols for the Workplace Standards document. Types of signs you may have on your site that fall under these standards are symbol signs, and these only contain a specific symbol, Symbol signs with text, which contain a symbol and text, or text-only signs. There are also three categories of signs, which are regulatory signs, warning signs, and information signs. <clears throat> so let's talk about those regulatory signs. So there are two classes of signs that are, fall under regulatory signs. CSA states that a regulatory sign shall be a the prohibition sign which denotes an order uh, forbidding an action or the mandatory sign which denotes an order requiring an action. So in the case of a prohibition sign, an example would be signs like no smoking or no admittance without proper ID or authority. The second one in the list here that you see under 1.2 is mandatory signs. So an example of a mandatory sign would be any specific PPE that's required for a job site or a specific area. Now we have warning signs. CSA states that warning signs shall be A, the caution sign which denotes a potential hazard, or B, the danger sign which denotes a definite hazard. So examples of a caution sign would be, say, a slipping hazard. Now I'm sure we've all seen the easel or the cone that's put out to warn customers of freshly mopped floors and uh, in establishments. That would be a good idea or a good example of one of those. And then an example of a danger sign would be a high voltage sign that you might see on electrical room doors. And then last, we have the information sign. CSA states that information signs shall be A, the emergency sign, which denotes first aid, 
health and fire protection, firefighting and emergency equipment, and B, the general information sign, which indicates permission or denotes public information. So examples of an emergency sign might be for first aid or a sign on the door that states emergency use only when evacuating building during an emergency. A general information site sign may be used for say a cafeteria or maybe even a site office. By law, hazardous material received in the workplace must be identified by special symbols on container labels. You may know these special symbols as WIMA symbols. These symbols indicate the nature of the hazardous material, such as compressed gas, oxidizing material, or toxic material. For information on the symbols to use and their color restrictions, check the controls product regulation under the Federal Hazardous Products Act and the WIMA section of the Saskatchewan Occupation Safety Regulations. So let's talk about the colors we had kind of talked about before. So let's start with red. This standard gives greater meaning to red by restricting its use to only two categories, 1.1 prohibition and 2.2 danger. Psychologically, red has a long standing association with both of these concepts. Even before the CSA standard on color was first published in 1977, a preferred method of indicating prohibition was a red X over an image. So where this standard differs from ISO 3864, which is the international standards, this is two separate colors for, uh, for warning, whereas ISO only has yellow signs. The sta this, this standard calls for two grades of warning, making a distinct difference between caution, which is yellow, and danger, which is red. So on to yellow. The yellow is restricted to one category only, which is number two in caution. So there is a long-standing association of yellow with this concept, especially for North American road signs. Green. Green is restricted to one application only, which is 3.1 emergency. This standard uses green and not red as uh, commonly used with the plus as shown here, as the color to symbolize the concept of personal safety, particularly in the context of fire protection equipment. This standard is in keeping with long-standing usage throughout Europe, Japan, parts of Southeast Asia and several states in the USA and corresponds to ANSI standards. Next up we have blue. So blue is restricted to single use 3.2 general information. Unlike red, yellow and black which have forceful overtones, blue is relatively bland and permissive hue. It was selected for this reason in as much as so many signs fall into the general information category. It is because of its permissive quality is like otherwise appropriate because the color blue is used to convey the concept of permission in direct contrast to red, which is more tolerant. Black. It is used in three applications, 1.1 prohibition, 1.2 mandatory, and 2.1 caution. Frequently it's combined with white and thus assumes a psychological overtone of authority is when something is spelled out in black and white. Uh, black and white are the colors used to denote regulations on highways. And white. White is widely used in the CSA standards in five of the six categories, the exception being category 2.1, which is yellow and black. The reason for this is reverse. Uh, so i.e. like the white image on a yellow field, it just lacks the adequate contrast for legibility purposes. So it's just a little harder to see. Dark gray. This is used as a background color for symbol signs with the text. This color provides good contrast with any of the colors in the CSA standards, and because of its neutral value, is compatible with most environments. So some of the issues to discuss when it comes to the signage. So whether you're evaluating your existing safety sign and color system or planning a new one, the system will be more effective and easier to implement by asking for feedback and suggestions from your staff. You can also tap into the expertise of your health and safety representative or committees. Discuss issues such as what messages need to be conveyed to employees and workplace visitors, which messages are most important to health and safety. Do current signs appropriately convey the importance of a message? Are current signs and safety colors easy to understand? Do they meet the needs of observers with visual limitations? For example, those who confuse red and, gr at red and green, like color blindness. How about the needs of employees who do not speak English? Are employees trained to understand workplace signs and colors? Do employees comply with the signs? Is there consistency in the use of safety signs and colors? Are signs visible away from clutter or obstructions and well, light, well lit? Are signs and colors effective in drawing attention hazards? Are signs posted in the best possible locations within appropriate distance from hazards? 
What is the general condition of existing signs? Do they meet the legal requirements? And do the signs, symbols, and colors used to reflect current standards? So those CSA standards we're talking about today. Some pointers for effective safety sign and color use. So after determining your needs, work with your health and safety reps or committees to set standards for signs and color use uh, throughout the workplace. Ensure the signs and colors are used consistently. Research shows that companies that have implemented a uniform sign and color system to make hazards more visible and easy to identify have successfully lowered their injury frequency rate. Workers know that the signs and colors mean the same thing even when they work in different departments or plant locations. It also enables employers to quickly locate first aid, firefighting, and other emergency equipment. The signs in the workplace should provide enough information for personnel to protect their health and safety. Signs ex expect to indicate hazards should attract a person's attention, clearly identify the nature of the hazard, specify the immediate action required, be posted in a place that provides enough time for a person to read the sign and act accordingly, be easily recognized and understood by all employees, Reflect the needs of those who have visual limitations or those who do not speak English, and be sized or placed according to the importance of the message. So, using easy to read and easy to understand signs, something like this easel that you're seeing. Help employees and workplace visitors understand signs quickly by using clear language and symbols that can be learned and recognized easy. Avoid using signs that contain only text messages. Combination of text and symbols is generally the most effective. Consider multilingual signs if you have employees who do not speak English. Use capital letters for the first letter of the word and small letters for the rest. Use appropriate warning words. These can be in capital letters if you prefer. So for example, like danger with uh, uh, all caps to warn of a definite hazard or caution in all caps to warn of a potential hazard. The lettering styles or fonts most recommended are sans serif, bold or regular face, so examples of that would include aerial, aerial uh, text. <clears throat> so posting your signs. We've already kind of touched on this earlier, but I wanted to just talk a little bit more about uh, making sure uh, you're paying attention as to where the signs are being posted. So signs should be clearly visible, positioned in the line of sight and free from any obstructions or clutter. So you don't want them behind the shelf. Keep signs well lit. Observers should be able to read a sign easily and recognize its safety color. Lighting should also be sufficient to make any hazard clearly visible. Post a sign within an appropriate distance from the hazard it's pointing out. An observer must have enough time to see and read the sign and do whatever is necessary to keep safe. So when we talk about limiting messages, we want to limit one message to each sign. Uh, to convey more than one message, use separate signs. For example, if hearing protectors and safety glasses are required, use two separate signs, one for hearing protection and another for eye protection. Now, this doesn't mean use like a, a bunch of different signs for everything. Uh, if there's a requirement for PPE, you can have one, let's say, poster board that has hearing protection, eye protection, uh, head protection, uh, and steel toe boots. But you want those all in different signs on the same sign like it's posted here with two separate figures. Uh, you don't want one person that shows a full body image with all the PPE on it. Hard uh, for some people to realize exactly what's required. So if you're using one big poster board, make sure there's in every individual item of personal protective equipment uh, is sorted out on that main poster uh, individually is what this means. So using the safety colors. Keep the colors to a minimum. This emphasizes the most important signs and color markings and also prevents confusion and visual fatigue. Use colors consistently throughout the workplace. Ensure that employees who are colorblind, specifically the red green confusing, can understand signs and color controls. Use symbol signs with text. Use flashing lights or audible arms or signs beside colored controls if required. You don't want to be using different shades of red uh, or stay away from using red and pink. Uh, this can just be confusing uh, for employees, especially if they don't mean the same thing, right? So training. Inform employees that signs and colors are being used in the workplace to protect employee visitor health and safety. Also point out to employees that their cooperation and feedback are necessary for the system to be effective. Not everyone may be aware that there's a purpose for and a meaning in the shape and color of safety signs, 
or that the colors on equipment in and around the workplace indicate hazards. Train employees so that they understand the meaning of various shapes, symbols, and colors used. Contents of possibly colored pipes uh, on their color, attached tags and other markings. The consequences if exposed to the hazard, safety precautions to follow, what to do in an emergency, and how to use emergency equipment. I mean, it's one thing if you point out where the fire extinguisher is, but if someone doesn't know how to use it, uh, that's not a lot of good to everybody that's involved in that emergency. Make this training a part of your orientation and induction training for new employees. Provide employees with orientation handbooks that contain complete and updated information on the safety signs and colors used in your workplace. Review the meaning of signs and colors periodically with employees to ensure all signs are understood. Provide refresher training as needed. Maintenance. So you want to maintain safety signs and keep them in good condition. Inspect signs during regular workplace inspections. Replace worn, faded, damaged, and outdated signs. Change signs that are often misunderstood or overlooked. Remove signs that are redundant or no longer needed. Repaint areas where safety colors have faded. So I, you'll notice throughout this presentation, I haven't directly pointed out any legislation uh, that's located within the uh, Act and Regulations. Uh, but the regulations do have specific laws on signage that include areas like smoking or traffic control or fall protection or even hearing protection, just to name a couple. So it's really important to know where uh, your signs are required and what type of signs that you should have. And absolutely feel free to contact us here at the SCSA and Advisory Services, and we'd be more than happy to help you along understanding the legislation regarding these signs. Now here at the SCSA, we do have a few different signs available for or purchase that are printed on Coroplast and are highly visible. You can contact the SCSA for more information on availability and purchase cost. All right. Just get out of screen share mode here. So that concludes our SCSA Toolbox Tuesday. I would like to take a moment to thank everyone for watching. By watching and participating in these discussions, we're all working together in making Saskatchewan the safest construction environment in Canada. So make sure you tune in next week for Toolbox Tuesday at 10 a.m. and our Wednesday webinar, which will be on the first Wednesday of every month at noon. I also want to remind you again that we have all our webinar presentations as well as Toolbox Talks available on our YouTube channel. These are a great resource for training and Toolbox Talks, especially if, like us, you're doing your meetings online. Remember and like and share this video and follow us on all social media platforms. Have a great day, everyone, and work safe.